Okay, so our data as computer scientists, our Java objects, our database rows, our points in a high dimensional space, and we want to talk about comparing them numerically and distances between things and clustering them uh, and minimum spanning trees and things like that. So uh, we need to be able to talk about distances to, between points in high dimensions. So let's just talk about that in general. This is a little bit of a more math uh, background, but gives some good perspective and things that are good to keep in the back of your head. So uh, first of all, distance between points. Uh, Go ahead and tell me the distance from the point zero zero to the point three four. Oh yeah, you know that one. Uh, it's a right triangle there with three and four. That's a three four five triangle, right? Pythagorean theorem, right? Nine and sixteen is twenty five. So the distance from here to here squared is twenty five. So that distance must be five. Okay. Um, what about the distance from twenty twenty? Uh, so up here, twenty twenty to twenty three twenty four. Oh yeah. That's just the same thing, right? So, uh, yeah, we go ahead and we take the difference between the coordinates, square them, add them up, and take the square root. And now you're thinking, oh yeah, that's that's the formula, I, the distance formula that I learned in in high school. Uh, difference between each coordinate, uh, square them, add them up, take the square root. Uh, by the way, distance from the origin. Yeah, when you take the difference between two numbers and one of the numbers is zero, well, it's just the same number. So we often talk about uh, distance from the origin is just talking about the size of the number. Uh, the one thing, oh, sorry, I'll come back. Um, what if I have a three-dimensional number? What's the difference from zero, zero, zero to three, zero, four? Now, wait a minute, that's kind of funny that I'm not using my y coordinate at all there, right? Uh, so just this, we're in the xz plane, so we know that the answer better be 5. Um, and you know, that same formula still works. If I take, hey, look at the difference between all the coordinates, uh, 3, 0, and 4. Square each of those, 9, 0, 16. Add those all up, I still have 25. So it, yeah, it seems like the same formula works, uh, and it does. So now here's one. Go and uh, figure this out yourself. Uh, what's the distance from 6, 4, 4 to 0, 0, 0? It doesn't come out even. Okay, just take all the differences, 6, 4, and 4. Uh, square each of those, so 36, 16, 16. Gosh, that's 36, and 16, and 16 is 32. 36, and 32 is 68. So it's the square root of 68. How big is that? Um, let's see, 8 squared is 64. 9 squared is 81, so it's bigger than 8, less than 9, a little bit bigger than 8. Let's say 8.1-ish would be my guess. Okay. Um, great. This is called the L2 norm, too, because we are squaring, adding up, and square rooting. Okay. Uh, there's another way to measure distance, though. It's the L3 norm. Uh, the L3 norm, you go ahead and cube and take the cube root. Okay. So what's the difference from 0, 0 to 3, 4? Take the difference, uh, 3, take, cube that, 4, cube that. So what do we got? Uh, we have 27, what's 4 cubed? 4 by 16, 64. 27 is 64, 80, 7, 4 is 11, 91. Okay, what's the cube root of 91? Gosh, um, let's see, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, 5 cubed is 125. So it's between 4 cubed and 5 cubed, and it feels like halfway. I know it's not a linear function, but I'll use it in a linear interpolation anyway. So it feels about 4.5, okay? So interesting, in the L3 norm, the distance from 0, 0 to 3, 4 is smaller than it used to be, okay? Or to put it a different way, if we start at a point and travel in the direction of 3, 4, uh, we need to go further before we reach, before we've traveled 5 units, okay? Okay, whatever. Um, weird, weird norm. Why would anybody use the L3 norm? Uh, um, we'll come back to that. So let's go look at a visual representation of this here. Um, so this here is the circle in L2. Looks like a regular old circle, so our usual distance metric. Um, what's the circle? It's a set of all points equidistant from the origin. In this case, uh, distance one from the origin. All the points that are exactly one unit away from the origin. Uh, so what about the 3 norm? 
Um, so he said a moment ago that if, yeah, you travel in a certain direction, you have to, and you want to go a, a certain length, you have to travel further before your odometer shows that length. Okay, in some sense, that's a weird way of phrasing it, uh, a little paradoxical. But let's go ahead and plot what uh, distance one looks like in the L3 norm. Uh, L2 is in olive, L3 is in blue here, and it sort of has bulged outward. Okay. Uh, the difference, by the way, from the origin to, you know, straight up, the location 0, 1, well, that's still 0, 1. The distance there is 0 to the cube plus 1 cubed. Add them up, take the cube root. That's still 1. So we're, we're still within that unit square that we're drawing things in. But in the 3 norm, a circle looks bulgy. Okay, if we um, look at it that way. Okay, well, what about the 4 norm, the 5 norm? We can do the 7th norm. Take a bunch of numbers, take them to the seventh power, and then add them up, take the seventh root. Um, by the way, one thing I should mention on the three norm uh, is when I talk about the three norm, uh, I take the, the difference of the numbers, I take the absolute value first, right? I don't take negative three to the third power. Uh, why? I want the distance from zero, zero to three, four to be the same. I don't want the if I say, hey, what's the distance from 3 to 4 to 0, 0, I don't want that to be the negative of my previous answer or anything weird like that. So with square roots, it didn't matter. Squares, it didn't matter. When I squared each component, it went positive. Um, if, it's, if we're an odd number, or in just in general, we'll say we're going to take the absolute value. Okay. Of each coordinate before we do the adding and the raising to a power. Okay. So uh, L7 norm, by the way, how far is it from... 0, 0 to 3, 4, plus 3 to the 7th, plus 4 to the 7th, and the 7th root of that. And how big is 3 to the 7th plus 4 to the 7th? Oh, gosh. Uh, I know the curve x to the 7th is a really steep, much steeper than a parabola. It goes way up quick. Uh, go over 3 to the 7th. It's pretty big. Go over to 4 to the 7th. It's much, much, much bigger. What's up there? Uh, 4 to the 7th. Much bigger than 3 to the 7th. If I add 3 to the 7th and 4 to the 7th, I guess something is a little bit bigger than 4 to the 7th, but 4 to the 7th is already so huge in comparison, I end up with just barely bigger than 4 to the 7th. Take the 7th root, I'll get something back that's just a little bit bigger than 4, okay? So, in fact, we can go ahead and try that out here. I'll go ahead and add, we'll show a circle using the L2 and the L3 and the L7 dimension. And we see the L7 dimension is now getting closer to that square. It has nice round corners, but it's more square-like overall. Okay, well what about the 1,000 norm? 3 to the 1,000 plus 4 to the 1,000, and then take the 1,000th root. Yeah, when I take 4 to the 1,000 and I add in 3 to the 1,000, it's going to make like no difference at all. Um, it's going to be essentially 4 to the 1,000. So it's, I won't even try 1,000, but I'm going to go ahead and try 20. Uh, I haven't tried this before. We'll see how it actually looks here. I guess I'm going to see it now, almost right on the square, except for right around the very, very tiny edge here. What about the infinity norm? 3 to the infinity, that's infinity. 4 to the infinity, whoa, that's even a much, 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 much bigger infinity. Add them together, it's the 4 to the infinity that really is the big number there. Take the infinity of root, I'll get back exactly 4. Why? 3 to the infinity compared with 4 to the infinity was as if it were 0. So... In the limit, uh, the circle in the L infinity norm is actually that square. Okay, so um, another way of phrasing that, the uh, difference in the L infinity norm is the biggest, the difference in the biggest coordinate. Okay, so, okay, that's the L. So yeah, we have 2, 3, infinity. Wait, 2, 3, infinity, what's missing? Well, what about 1? Let's go ahead and I'll take out the 7. Uh, let's put in the 1 norm and see what that looks like. But let's actually think about it first. What is the 1 norm? The distance, you know, it's the size of you know, 0, 0 to 3, 4 in the 1 norm. 3 to the 1 plus 4 to the 1. Well, that's 3 plus 4 is 7. Take the 1th root. Well, that's 7. Ah, the distance between two points in the 1 norm is just the sum of the coordinates of the differences. Um, okay, so what is the circle going to look like? What are all the points that are 
a distance one away from the very center. Well, the point one zero, if I add those all up, I get one. What about the corner one one? And the, L1, the difference, the distance from zero zero to one one is gonna be one plus one in this weird wacky norm. That's too far, two, we've gone too far. Um, what are two numbers that are equal but add up to one? One half, one half. Ah, oh, that's gonna be zero one is gonna be on there. One half, one half is gonna be on there. If I think about it, one third, two, one third, two thirds is gonna be on it. One half, one half, two thirds, one third, one zero, zero one. Ah, maybe you can sort of get this here. The answer is this purple diamond. That's the L1 norm. And the L1 norm is actually, now you've been wondering, why are we talking about these wacky other ways of measuring distances? My mammy taught me how to measure distances and it does me, it's done me good my whole life. Um, yeah, the L1 norm actually has uh, some good rationale as the L infinity norm does. Uh, the L1 norm is sometimes called the Manhattan distance or taxi cab distance. Say I'm on a grid city like Manhattan and I want to go from uh, 0th Avenue and 0th Street off to 3rd Avenue and 4th Street. How far do I need to travel? Well, I can't cut through buildings, not without getting picked up for trespassing. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and have to travel three blocks and then four blocks, a total of seven blocks. That's the Manhattan distance, okay? And that's an eminently reasonable sort of... Um, notion of distance to use if you're talking about how to get places in a taxi. Um, yeah, some other uh, diff places where you might want to use the L1 norm. Um, you know those bike lock combos where you have like the four little spinning wheels? They're each labeled like 0 to 9 or A through Z or something like that. Uh, and I want to know the distance between two combinations. Well, it seems like a reasonable notion of distance would be for each dial, how far, if I go to the first combination now, how many changes do I need to make on the first dial plus number of rotations on the second dial plus the number of rotations on the third dial? That's the L1 norm. I just add up the number of rotations needed on each single wheel to get my total distance. Okay? Or I think of, a, hey, I have two Meyer Briggs scores. Okay, so I took this personality test, my wife took this personality test, and oh, on the th thinking feeling axis that goes from maybe you know, minus 10 to positive 10, um, I get a positive five and she got a negative one. Okay, well, that's, we differ by six on that axis. And then you give the sensory versus intuitive axis and there, you know, we had a difference of two. What is our overall differences in our personality? Taking I have a set of four numbers for the differences, uh, squaring them and adding them up, taking the square root, why would you square and square root these these numbers that sort of no longer seem motivated it makes a lot of sense just to say take the absolute value just look at the add up the distance we are in each of the four dimensions okay um, or very similar you have a, a dating site you have people have answered these questions uh, on a scale of one to ten how much do you like spicy food how much do you like hiking how much do you like video games and you might just sort of say two people the difference between these two people is just the difference on each coordinate okay um, what would it mean to take the L infinity norm on the stating site? I have a bunch of questions. How much first person likes spicy food, hiking, and what do I have video games? Uh, and the second person, how much they have on each of those? The infinity norm would say, hey, what is the biggest difference between those two? And that might be the, the gulf you have to overcome. Uh, if you can overcome that, you can overcome all the others easily enough, maybe. I don't know. Um, I don't run dating sites. Um, but yeah, so the L infinity norm might be something you consider using, or the L1 norm you might consider using. You probably wouldn't want to use the L2 norm or the L3 norm, or maybe you would, I don't know. Uh, what I want you to be thinking about as a data scientist is, gosh, when I'm thinking about distance between data points, what is a good way to measure distance? And these different norms are uh, good standard ways people have come up with that might well be appropriate for your, for your point. Okay, um, we'll come back and have one more video being a little bit more real. Let's look at some other types of fields and how to compare things and some of the troubles about comparing different dimensions.